Hello, welcome back to today's discussion on cytochrome P450. In the last class, we were discussing this very important metalloenzyme known as cytochrome P450. We have seen a nice and crystal clear structure of cytochrome P450 with the camphor as the substrate. As you have seen, here is the porphyrin ring, iron center is at the middle and there is a proximal site. At the proximal site, this cysteine is attached. As you have seen in case of hemoglobin and myoglobin, exactly similar porphyrin ring is there but over here you will have histidine as a side chain. In this case, the cysteine side chain makes it really interesting for its chemistry. As you have seen when histidine is there in case of hemoglobin and myoglobin, this iron center with histidine is capable of reversibly binding oxygen and deliver that oxygen towards the center where it is necessary. In this case, histidine is replaced by this cysteine and we will see that upon oxygen binding at this distal site. So, again this is the proximal site, this is the distal site. So, at this distal site upon oxygen binding, this oxygen will get reduced by this iron center and subsequently it will try to react with the organic substrate. Now the orientation of this organic substrate in front of the active site will dictate which CH bond to be hydroxylated or to get functionalized. So in that particular case, in these cases or any enzyme, these side pocket which are not really directly part of the main active site plays crucial, crucial role in dictating the reactivity pattern on this substrate. As you will see, for a radical type of mechanism, a tertiary CH is more preferred over secondary and secondary is more preferred preferred over primary. But all of these cases in, in case of the substrate binding pocket, substrate orientation with respect to the enzyme active site and perfect positioning of these two component that is means the reactive component as well as the reactant that is substrate is quite important. As we have seen, cytochrome P450 type of enzyme not only capable of hydroxylating a particular organic substrate, it can also promote a series of related events. Number of reaction or type of reaction that cytochrome P450 can carry out is almost countless. We will see a list of reaction today where cytochrome P450 can play a role and a crucial role. I hope you got that this is a porphyrin center and iron in the middle. So, heme iron center with the cysteine binding, thioleto binding, this is the site which is responsible for the chemistry. We did not show here any oxygen species yet because this is the crystal structure that obtained. Obtaining crystal structure with an oxygen binding is always very difficult because those are very reactive intermediate and the binding may not be too strong and therefore getting a crystal structure is next to impossible. Although many attempts have been made to get this crystal structure. Usually to get this unstable crystal structure, one needs to cool down the reaction, reaction solution so that the 
desired other reaction can be slowed down significantly. In addition, since these are reactive intermediate that is going to be generated from reaction of iron and oxygen, eliminating the substrate or replacing the substrate with some another organic substrate which can inhibit the desired reaction, desired let us say in this case hydroxylation reaction that would be quite useful because in presence of the inhibitor may be those desired reaction can be prevented partially or completely. In particular for cytochrome P450 cases these are very reactive intermediate that forms at the iron center therefore preventing a desired reaction is always extremely challenging. Let us look at what we have discussed in the last class of course we have discussed about the oxygen molecular orbital and these lone pair or unpaired electron uh, are responsible for the triplet ground state of oxygen and once these oxygens are getting reduced by one electron that electron will be coming in one of these two orbitals right these are degenerate orbitals. If it is doubly reduced that means a paroxo species is formed so the mono mono electron or one electron reduced species is called superoxo two electron reduced species is called paroxo once it is reduced by two electrons then one electron will come over there another electron will come over here. So, overall that would be the molecular orbital diagram of oxygen 2 minus that is the paroxo if it is one electron reduced that would be the superoxo or superoxide species. In the whole process in converting oxygen into some useful compound such as aliphatic substrate can be converted to hydroxylated product, you still need to have a second oxygen atom reduced subsequently to form the water. So, these two electron that is required to reduce to, uh, this terminal or the second oxygen atom to water molecule that is taken care by this relay of electron that happens towards the active site as we have discussed in the last class. So, the electron hopping or transfer throughout the chain and up to the iron sulfur protein happens and from there on it provides the electron whenever required for the oxygen reduction process at the heme iron center with 16 bound center in the cytochrome P450. Let us look at some different type of reaction that we have discussed in the last class. So, if you are taking an organic substrate such as aliphatic substrate it can be reduced. So, this is this is from a review article ok. We have the review article yeah I think one of these review article yeah ok that is mentioned over there came review 1996 that is that is the article let us go back. Okay. So, chem review this is from chem review 1996 where hydrocarbon hydroxylation can be occurred. So, this is a summarize, sum, summary of the cytochrome P450 reaction here you see that a CH bond can be reacted to give the COH aliphatic substrate hydroxylation chemistry in this is one of the easy to understand reaction. So, where a hydrogen atom abstraction at this center will occur and the OH iron OH iron 4 hydroxo that gets generated over there undergo rebound to give the C hydroxylation reaction. One can think of taking an olefin as a organic substrate as opposed to this aliphatic sp3 CH bond. This iron oxo species that you have seen getting generated in the last class that iron oxo species these are high valent iron oxo species iron 5 oxo you cannot talk it as a iron 5 oxo it should be a iron 4 oxo with porphyrin radical cation being there can transfer the oxygen atom to give you the epoxide species. If you are taking a terminal alkyne let us say phenyl acetylene or alkyl acetylene moiety it can be subsequently transformed to the corresponding terminal carboxylic acid. 
that is quite phenomenal reaction I will say and you see this is an quite interesting tile intermediate that is proceeding for the reaction. So, abstraction of the C H bond from this and the rebound of the hydroxyl and then subsequent rearrangement will give rise to the C double bond C double bond O intermediate. So, let me let me draw that reaction just quickly. So, if we are trying to draw this reaction, it would be so C triple bond C H we have and then R we do have and let us say this iron oxo intermediate is there this would be iron 4 oxo with a radical cation which is essentially iron 5 oxo. Um, so, this will gives rise to the abstraction of this species and we will have R C radical plus plus this species will be giving rise to iron hydroxo this is going to be an iron 4 hydroxo this radical and this hydroxo then combine. So, iron 3 hydroxo getting generated iron 3 hydroxo is getting generated and this C radical and this hydroxy radical will form a bond together. So, overall it will be iron COH. So, this is the oxygen that is coming from there. So, this is the oxygen coming from there and then the protonation would lead to the intermediate where you will see R H double bond C double bond O is forming right. So, this is a quite simple and effective reaction by and then upon hydrolysis at the center one can think of reacting it with uh, with uh, of course, this will go and that will come back overall this is going to give you the terminal terminal uh, acid moiety along with the this CH2OR moiety right. So, what we have seen right now over here is uh, is is the is the formation of of such terminal oxide species and uh, that gets generated uh, from this from this species right. So, what you have seen this intermediate is reacting to give you R C H 2 C O 2 H terminal of carboxylic acid is getting generated from this reaction. If there is an arene ring, so arene epoxidation or aromatic ring hydroxylation and along with NIH shift it will happen. So, what happens over here is the oxo species that is over there. So, it can undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction at this olefin center to give the epoxide moiety which can then 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 undergo either uh, either uh, NIH shift or, or the overall phenol formation upon subsequent upon subsequent um, rearrangement and removal of HX right. If you are taking N methyl or N alkyl amine it could be a secondary amine as is here or it could be a tertiary amine. This amine can have reaction with the iron 5 oxo or iron 4 oxo radical cation intermediate where this is the this is the aliphatic sp3 center this can react and the hydroxy moiety can rebound with it or bind with it this hydroxo then can undergo uh, undergo further further uh, reaction to give you the formaldehyde this ch2oh unit gets to the formaldehyde and the nd alkylation occurs in the whole process to give you the aliphatic amine or primary amine um, pri primary amine it could be aliphatic and aromatic depending on the r so nd alkylation chemistry can also happen another very interesting reaction which we may have seen in different context is that uh, the sd alkylation chemistry can also happen as you can see over here um, this uh, this thioether rsme can be a can be also reactive towards this high valent iron oxo species to give you rsch2oh moiety now this rsch2oh moiety can then further undergo 
a cleavage of this C alkyl bond upon further rearrangement formed from this unit and uh, so these N D S D alkylation can also be possible right. So, overall R S H is getting generated and formaldehyde is coming out from the reaction. Similar to S D alkylation and N D alkylation reaction, one can think of doing O D alkylation reaction. For example, if you have anisole, you can get phenol. If you have thioanisole, you can get thiophenol and formaldehyde. If you have thio, um, if you have anisole, then this methyl unit once again similar to the SD alkylation chemistry, it can undergo the sp3 CH hydroxylation chemistry upon CH activation or CH, um, CH abstraction. In this case, it is a radical mechanism which can give rise to the COH 2 OH and ROH overall HCHOH generated. So, we have discussed briefly in the last class, let me let me discuss one more time here uh, in, in brief that that is. So, if you have this high valent iron oxo intermediate, it could be iron 4 oxo and then radical cation whatever way you are. Uh, ready to ready to write radical cation at this center and uh, in the porphyrin unit right in the porphyrin unit and you can take an RH ok. Now, this RH can undergo the reaction with it. So, overall let us say just for clarity I would write it down as iron 5 oxo and and the porphyrin moiety over here. So, it can give rise to the iron 4 hydroxo right. So, if you are breaking it down it is going to be iron 4 O dot O dot and this H dot over here picks up to give you that along with R radical formation. Now, this R radical formation then can undergo. So, this is the species ok not that one you have to draw like that and then then fire that this homolytic cleavage if you want to draw it. So, this is a iron 3 of course, it will not stay as it is and over there it will pick up a water molecule from, from the media and then RH R dot radical and this radical half a bond will give you the ROH formation. If you are doing O18 labeling in these cases you will end up getting O18 labeling from 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 the oxygen moiety. So, as you have seen this super uh, this iron 5 oxo has come in turn form from from the iron 3 hydroperoxo species right where this was also let us say if it is labeled oxygen or O16 or O18 depending on where it is coming in turn that has taken a proton and an electron to, uh, and from iron 3 superoxo it is getting generated right. In the last class we have seen and that is in, in turn getting reacted with iron 2 and O2, O2 if it is if it is O18 leveling, if it is O18 leveled O2 then all the way up to the product this O18 leveling will be getting reflected. So, this iron 2 species iron 2 porphyrin complex once it is formed ok of course, there is always a porphyrin ring. Once this iron 2 porphyrin ring is reacting with the oxygen then this oxygen uh, will be getting reduced by one electron to form iron 3 and the superoxo intermediate. So, this is the superoxo intermediate this superoxo abstract a hydrogen atom or picks up a proton and electron from the system. Electron is coming from let us say this iron sulfur cluster that we were discussing uh, a moment ago and uh, this, this electron and proton. So, it, it forms a first iron 3 peroxo species then gets protonated to give the iron 3 hydroperoxo intermediate. Now, this iron 3 hydroperoxo intermediate um, can, can, can then further cleave uh, to give the hydroxide and the iron 5 oxo which is necessarily iron 4 oxo with a radical cation on the porphyrin moiety. So, porphyrin ring has a electron cloud and conjugated electron cloud that pi electron can be oxidized pretty easily to give the radical cation as well as the iron 5 gets say let us say reduced by that electron to give the iron 4 
a ra radical cation oxo intermediate which is essentially iron 5 oxo and for the clarity purpose for our um, discussion purpose it can be concluded that and then the RH which can be over there can react through which is sitting right over there can react with iron 5 oxo to give you iron 4 hydroxo and R dot. Over here a water molecule will react with this ROH overall overall to give you overall to give you R dot OH or ROH molecule. Okay. So, this is what the mechanism is for the substrate RH to ROH formation. So, as you can see RH is getting reacted with, with, with this high valent iron oxone intermediate to give you the ROH species. Okay. We have seen this similar mechanism previously just to say that this O18 labeling is also quite interesting. So, similarly this hydroxylation chemistry, this hydroxylation chemistry as we are seeing over here it can be it can be it can be uh, it can be followed quite easily. It can be uh, followed um, quite quite easily and and one can one can follow up this chemistry either on the alkyl S alkyl and O alkyl species or even the N alkyl species. In case of the N hydroxylation chemistry similar chemistry can happen once again the one of the H over here will be replaced by OH over here one of the H is replaced by OH that is sp 3 CH this is sp 3 CH replaced by OH once again this is sp 3 CH replaced by OH. This is more of a epoxidation type of chemistry like olefin epoxidation electrophilic uh, aromatic substitution type of reaction that is happening epoxide formation and subsequent rearrangement gives that and in case of in case of uh, the alkyne once again the CH bond is getting cleaved and getting hydroxylated as we have just discussed and giving rise to the overall terminal uh, carboxylic acid formation which are I believe quite quite successful and quite efficient transformation of, of, of uh, synthetic arena. Okay. So, we have the N hydroxylation chemistry and the N oxidation chemistry as you see if you have an imine or equivalent species it can form the N oxide. If you have sulfur oxidation of course, sulfur N dealkylation or S dealkylation is possible dealkylation type of chemistry is possible. In addition sulfur can be oxidized further to give you the sulfur oxidation species. So, all these reactivity essentially trying to tell us is that cytochrome P450 is a very reactive intermediate. For example, this RSME if it is reacting with let us say uh, let us say it, it, if it is reacting with SME with iron oxo high valent. So, what can happen that this sulfur this lone pair electron can just um, just oxidize to give you the sulfoxide sulfoxide RME and iron iron 3 species right. So, if this was iron 4 radical cation radical cation where so iron 5 oxo then then this upon, upon, upon transferring the oxygen it becomes iron 3. So, these are again very fascinating reactions and it, it is quite 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 exciting to see that a versatile reaction or a series of great reaction can be performed by cytochrome P450. But remember the major problem of the cytochrome P450 is really we are having quite a lot of reactivity as you can see over here this reactivity is, is not, not limited to a particular organic substrate it almost reacts with every organic substrate. So, that is going to be a quite a challenge and, um, and minimizing such reactivity a reactivity can be extremely difficult. So, if you have aliphatic substrate if re it reacts, if you have olefin it reacts, if you have alkyne it reacts, if you have aromatic ring it reacts, if you have N alkyl it reacts, S alkyl, O alkyl, primary amine, secondary amine. So, this is primary amine, this is secondary amine. If you have tertiary amine of course, it will react to give the N dealkylation product. If you have an even imine it can form S N oxidation, it can form the S oxidation also to 
give you the sulfoxidation product not only S dealkylation product. So, as you see that even with one substrate different, different types of reaction it can do. So, it is a very very reactive intermediate and thanks to that iron high valent oxo species. In these cases it is equivalent to iron 5 oxo species right. So, we will we'll get back to that once again little later. But uh, what is important to understand that the cytochrome P450 in turn has helped us uh, in biosynthesis of many different natural product. For example, if one is looking for biosynthesis of the CO bond just like this, one can perhaps think of having an epoxide formation over there and then this phenol which was over here then can attack. So, an epoxide over here and the attack can form the CO bond. Similarly, one can think of doing the CO bond formation starting from the from the phenol either from this side or from this side. Let us say if it is a diphenol then the epoxide, epoxide formation over there and subsequent attack by the phenol can form this bond. Similarly, a carbon carbon bond can also be formed in this vancomycin by this cytochrome P450. Indeed, 3 units of cytochrome P450 can be active on on this vancomycin to gives rise to the reaction product or the, far, far, uh, or, or the final vancomycin synthesis, right. So, in the last class also we have seen how different metaboli, metabol uh, how different, different organic substrate that is get, getting incorporated into our body and then further can be reacted with cytochrome P450. For example, by mistake or by, uh, by, uh, by accident if this benzopyran, benzopyran molecule is getting, uh, getting incorporated in our body, then, then this highly conjugated and highly de of course, delocalized, delocalized spy electron system which are relatively easy to react with a with a high valent iron oxo intermediate it will end up reacting as if like this is an olefin uh, isolated olefin in a way so uh, this olefin can be can be reacted with the with, with the iron 4 oxo or in this case iron 5 oxo equivalent uh, to give rise to this um, to this um, to, uh, to this epoxide ring which can then a ring open to give the cis hydroxylation intermediate which uh, again can, can give rise to this epoxide formation at this side which is truly isolated olefin double bond and this epoxide formation and further damage further ring opening can ensure that such molecule benzopyran molecule can interact with the DNA and um, during this formation and or via this formation it can react with DNA itself it may not be reacting with the DNA, but this species particularly is going to be very reactive or this species uh, derived from this is going to be very reactive and is going to damage or intercalate interact bind with DNA and is going to going to destroy the DNA significantly alright. So, so far we have seen uh, that these reactions are quite powerful. Last, just like last reaction uh, we have seen that in even the camphor type of substrate which can be crystallographically characterized and can be hydroxylated quite easily by utilizing this enzyme. All right, we will come back and discuss this reaction beautiful reaction slowly with respect to the cytochrome P450 activity. I hope you will keep studying this and we will start here on the camphor substrate in the next class. Thank you very much.